Hi, Sagittarius. Welcome to your January 2018 astral update. It's Raina here. So Sag, lots of activity in the second house of earned income. And this is in the sign of Capricorn. Now, this is typical every year at this time because Capricorn, you're always going to have sun in Capricorn and new moon in Capricorn. Personal plants like Mercury and Venus, Mars is, is not there yet. But this year we have a new addition. We've had Pluto there for 10 years doing its thing. Now we have Saturn going into second house. I, I do want to note that if you're watching this for Sagittarius Sun, understand that this is your solar chart. For my own um, ideas about this, I believe that the solar chart is more of our energetic, so spiritual and um, psychological consciousness types of um, influence more than the mundane or worldly um, actual nuts and bolts, bolts of what is happening, which I look at the, the natal chart. Okay. So you, if you know what your time of birth is, you can go online. There's a bunch of uh, free chart generators and you can find out you can, you know, pull up your own chart and see what your rising sign is. And that will give you a whole different set of transits for the same period of time. And when I uh, do private readings, I am looking at the natal chart. So that's what differs if you're watching for your sun sign. But, you know, you can combine these two elements to give a fuller picture of what is going on with you. And um, either way, it's, it's very interesting because if we look at Capricorn energy, and for us that is our second house of earned income, and we think of Pluto being there for 10 years, even if it hasn't affected you in terms, in, you know, in adverse negative terms, in terms of your finances, you may have had quite a change of mind regarding how you view the way that you earn money. You may realize, like I have, that it's not what we thought it was, that it's not like, okay, we're here now, it's like we have to survive and we have to earn money. I realize, I have realized that it's a magical process that cannot be contained by, you know, a ledger book. I thought it could be. I thought it was all about budgets and all about keeping track of everything. And of course, you know, I do that. I do, you know, look at my, <laughs> you know, the money that I'm spending, the money that I'm, I have in the bank, you know, of course I am. But it's more than that. It's seeing the potential. And Sagittarians love the bigger picture. They love to, to dream big and think big. So hopefully Pluto has been a positive influence being in your second house for 10 years. It's going to be there for five more years. So you better make friends with it. It's a transformative energy is my point. Now we have a Saturn in this second house. What does Saturn do? Saturn keeps us organized. It keeps us from excess. And Sagittarius is a sign that can be careless, that can be, I think all fire signs have the potential for being impulsive. So buying things on, you know, on the spot that look good, and then you never use them. Or doing something, yeah, on the spur of the moment, um, signing up for a course that you, you end up not even 
really participating. I'm talking about like even online things or a workshop that you end up, you know, flaking out and not going to. And these kind of things can add up. So Saturn asks us to be very organized and be on point. And that's a good thing. We may balk like unruly children at that kind of an influence. And I know that some people have complained about Saturn being in our sign for over two and a half years. But I found it very productive overall. Not doesn't mean there weren't any challenges in, in, in the past few years for me, but I still found it to be a good experience. And yet so many people seem to have had other than that. And what I would say is that now with Saturn in your second house, cultivating the proper attitude is highly important because you can always blame something externally for whatever's going on in your life. But ultimately, it's on us to make the best life we can for ourselves. So on the first of the month or the second, we have that full moon in Cancer, 11 degrees, master number, super moon, eighth house. What does eighth house mean? Eighth house is sex, death, other people's money. You may discover something about your spouse, what they're doing with their money that you didn't know about. This could be an unpleasant surprise, you know, to say the least, if somebody is a spendaholic. But although some people characterize full moons as endings, and would interpret this as a spouse losing their job or something like that, getting laid off, what, what you would call it, maybe retiring. I see it as a time of great abundance because full moons are the fullness of the moon can bring things to fruition, very fertile time. So to me, fertility, fertility equals abundance. Now, this could come from money that you did not earn. It doesn't have to be a spouse. It could be from an inheritance, perhaps an inheritance that finally is resolved and people are getting their piece of the pie. And so you could see an increase with this full moon. The, f uh, the eighth house is also the house of death. But before you start to freak out, realize that you will have loved ones die during transits other than the full moon in the eighth house. So don't think that this means it's inevitable that somebody's going to die that you know who, you know, that it, it, on the first or the second. That's not necessarily the case. But I had to bring that up because that certainly could be in play for some people. I would imagine that if there's somebody you know who is already um, sick, that that might be more the case than just somebody out of the blue. But this is another one. Um, some some secrets, especially sec sexy secrets, could come out in some way. Again, even if it's something that is very upsetting, it's for the highest good. You don't want somebody cheating on you um, and you don't know about it. So it's a release. Full moons are about release. It's actually a great detox time because the eighth house is about purging uh, since Pluto rules this house. So um, on the second... Uranus goes direct, and now all the planets are direct. And Uranus is at 24 degrees of Aries as it stations direct. And this is the fifth house of romance. And so this has been an area of great ups and downs 
for some, for some of you, it may be in the romance area. If you are single, you may have felt like there have been like weird people that you have met for Sages, That may not be a bad thing, however, but there may have been kind of, um, erratic comings and goings. Maybe you met somebody, you hit it off, and then they disappeared on you. Well, this is less likely to happen now, but I personally feel that Uranus in any house can be very exciting, electric, and in the fifth house could possibly even lead to you meeting your soulmate in a very unusual way where you least expect to meet him or her. So with all the planets direct now, it's a great time to press forward in all the things that you have been wanting to do. Mercury is in our sign until the 11th. And by the way, it's during this time that it gets back to the degree it was where it retrograded at 28 Capricorn. So I'm curious if any Sagittarians have Mercury retrograde horror stories. On my end of things, I don't feel that there was anything out of the norm, although I didn't feel quite myself. I did feel kind of like things were not quite right. So, um, and I even came down with a, a cold or a flu. I don't know what the heck that was at the, at the tail end of it. So it, it was quite um, challenging from, from that aspect to, to have a cold um, around my uh, birthday. Actually, let me see. I think I recovered before Mercury went uh, direct. So that was nice. But it's it's just like... Having it in your own sign, I think, kind of makes you a little bit up in the air. And so now when Mercury goes into Capricorn, that will turn a page and we will really feel that sense of forward movement, okay? And this happens on the 11th. In that second house, mind on your money and money on your mind. And um, just carrying that theme of Mercury transits to its full conclusion in January. On the 31st, Mercury will go into Aquarius, the third house, and Mercury rules this house. This is a house of the internet. So that can be very um, good for people who are online people, types of people, we have YouTube channels and blogs, vlogs, the gamut, or for people who are teaching or learning. Okay, so, or writing, shall I say, too. Okay, so then we have a new moon at, six, at 26 degrees of Capricorn on the 16th of January. So new beginning somehow with uh, the money that you earn, maybe a new income stream. Um, if it's not a new income stream, you may see new life in another income stream that you thought was maybe kind of just kind of idling. Um, it, it kind of picks up steam. The very next day, Venus has been in the second house and it goes into the third house. Let's talk about Venus in the second house. I love talking about Venus in the second house. I mean, it's going to be there. Venus is going to be in Capricorn till 17th. So that's half of the month. Venus in the second house can bring more money to you because Venus rules the second house. And, uh, and so you can have more money to be able to buy luxury items, things that you don't necessarily need to get by in life, but you want kind of higher ticket items. And so that in itself can show that you have the money to do this. It may have something to do with that full moon at the beginning of the month. If this, if that was something to do with um, some money that came through a lump sum, 
by by the middle of the month, you may be ready to kind of spend it. And then on the 17th, it goes into the third house. And this is that house that relates to communication. So it can be a very creative time for for people who are writers, creative writing. It can be a time when you're able to make money from online adventures, make money from writing, make money from public speaking, teaching. You may be taking a course that um, helps you to gain more money on your job, like a certificate type of a course. But Venus in the third can simply mean that you are getting along with your siblings because Venus can restore harmony to a situation. The third house is siblings, cousins, people, extended family members. On the 26th, Mars goes into Sagittarius, which is pretty darn awesome. Because this means that for most of the month, Mars is going to be in the 12th house. And um, the 12th house for people is kind of a <laughs> difficult place to be because Mars is a personal planet. And um, uh, when you have, when you have, have the month before your solar return, the sun is in that 12th house and you tend to get really tired, uh, you know, easily. And this is true for all of these personal planets when you have them in the 12th house. Now, in our case, Mars has been lagging behind and it's going to be in Scorpio most of the month. I think in general that once Mars goes into Sagittarius, it's going to lighten the vibe immensely for everyone because Mars and Scorpio is very heavy. And you may, as you're, as you're listening to this right now, you may be nodding your head in agreement and understanding this because Mars is, is a very powerful influence. It's kind of like what motivates us. And in Scorpio, it's like Perry Mason. It's this detective, this probing, intense energy. It's, you know, it's funny. I don't know how many people know this, but not only is Scorpio ruled by Pluto, it's ruled by Mars, just like Aries is. So there's always this aggressive edge to a Scorpio person, if you know Scorpios, that is, is um, it, it may not show up in the same way that a an Aries person has, has that aggression because Aries is very impatient and Scorpios tend not to be impatient. Um, they, they're a fixed sign. They tend to kind of wait things out, but there still is that aggression. And with, with uh, Sagittarius, it's more like a puppy dog. Okay. So I think that we're going to feel lighter, but with Mars in the 12th house, we may be a little bit like a caged animal <laughs> because Mars is very active and the 12th house is very passive. So what can you do? Well, you, you can only do what you can do. You're going to have all this other energy balancing it out. So it won't be that bad, but definitely Hatha yoga, which is a spiritual activity that's also physical, is your best bet because the 12th house is a spiritual house. So it kind of combines the, the best of both worlds. So with Mars in our sign, we're going to feel more active physically. We're going to be more aggressive, which can be a not so good thing for a Sagittarius because we're a fire sign and we tend to be very assertive. And this makes us like really a zealot, you know, cause we tend to be preachy, annoyingly preachy to other people, opinionated, and we wouldn't have it any other way, would we? Well, it's just going to be on steroids, that's all. So watch your P's and Q's. 
On the 31st, we have a total lunar eclipse, which also happens to be a blue moon, second full moon in the month in Leo. Guess what degree? 11 degrees. So we can look at the month of January as a true 11-11 portal. The month begins with a full moon at 11 degrees, ends with a full moon at 11 degrees, and the month, the year itself is an 11 um, universal year. And because 2 plus 1 plus 8 equals 11, plus not only that, we have a one month. And one is the number that the magician card is in, in the tarot. That's a card of um, new beginnings and just self mastery, self empowerment. So definitely this is one of those types of months. And this is going to be in the ninth house. Again, a lunar eclipse is a p very powerful full moon. So all of the attributes of the full moon are increased by three, threefold. And this is in the ninth house that we rule. Okay. So the ninth house is the house of the higher mind and foreign travel, anything expansive, as well as publishing, teaching. So a lunar eclipse here could be that some people have like a very um, profound religious experience. Now, I said religious and not spiritual. Why did I say that? Because the 12th house to me is the Wu house of the unconscious mind and past lives, other spiritual realms, okay, in Pisces. The ninth house, Sagittarius, to me is more of the worldly version of that. So your philosophical framework, we all have a philosophical framework, even atheists. Everyone lives their life by a credo. Or is it credo? <laughs> credo, credo. Um, and so it doesn't have to be a particular, a particular organized religion or school of thought. It can just be your own way of viewing the world. But this may, you may have an aha moment on steroids that kind of alters things, that really changes things up. Some of you may be coming back from an amazing journey that you've been on. It's like a homecoming. And and this is a profound experience for you. Maybe you've been abroad for many years. And it's like it's it's like um coming full circle. So this can be it, it could be that you are going to embark even though it's an ending. It could be a beginning. It's got to be a beginning. There has to be a beginning after an ending. So it's possible that um, your adventures far away are actually bringing you back home. And you realize that you were trying, you know, in some cases you may have been trying to escape something and you realize that wherever you go, there you are. You know, it, I, I'm just coming up with all these scenarios that doesn't, that doesn't touch the surface of what could be happening. But I did want to make you aware of that because we did have a solar eclipse in the same house back in August. And depending on things that have transpired since then, you would kind of get a feel for that theme. So quite a dramatic ending to the month of January. And I hope it's a very productive month for you with all this second house activity. Hope, hopefully it's very profitable and um, that you learn a few things about yourself, Sagittarius. And um, good luck to you. If you'd like a private reading, I promote with these types of readings, my natal chart interpretation. I have added additional time 
And by the way, if you happen to be listening at the end of December, but only until the end of December, there's an additional 20% off of all my readings. So um, my website is rain and moon astrology. Um, dot com. The link is below to that. If you do take advantage of the discount, again, only until the end of 2017, the coupon code is JUPITER, all in capital letters. Have a great January. Take care. Bye.